Hello and welcome to the second episode of my Sound Design Here Create series. This is Project 1, Sound for a Sculpture, Episode 2, C and Shapes. So let me first reiterate a little what we're going to be doing here. The whole point of this series is to design sounds in a context, and that context is a prompt. I gave you the prompt last episode, but let's have another look at it. So the prompt is as follows. Here is an image which is of a sculpture, and we are supposed to do the following. Here is a sculpture. Create the audio that would accompany it as part of an art installation. So in other words, we're going to try and create the sounds that we would imagine playing in an art installation. Last episode, we spent some time coming up with ideas around that, and we used the Sonicware Liven XFM synthesizer to come up with a very basic example of what we wanted. And to reiterate that, we had a wave type sound representing the room. We had a sort of dripping sound representing the floor. We listened to a grinding sound from some cups representing the base of the sculpture. And finally, a sort of enveloped synth sound representing the sculpture itself. Now, I'm quite happy with the way that that worked, but the sounds themselves were not very refined. So what we're going to do today is make some more refined sounds. Rather than making all of them in one episode, I'm going to divide this among two episodes. This episode, we're going to do the synthesized sounds. Next episode, we're going to do the sampled sounds. And then the episode after, we're going to bring all of that together into something complete. So the synthesizer I'm going to use for some of the synthesized sounds, specifically the sound of the sculpture, is the Arturia Microfreak. But the other part of the sound that I'm going to do is going to be done in Bitwig. Specifically, I'm going to do it in the Polygrid. Now, I have a project that I've already created here just to set some basic parameters. Specifically, I have set a loop of length corresponding to about one and a half minutes. I set the tempo to 60 BPM. I have this audio track, which is monitoring from the Microfreak. And I have this default polygrid patch, so I haven't make any, made any changes, but this polygrid is where I'm going to make the sound of the waves. So let's look at that and let's talk about what we're going to do. So firstly, we don't need this oscillator or this envelope. One of the things we do need though is since we'll be using noise, noise can be very loud. So the first thing I'm going to do is put an attenuator and I'm going to turn it way down before we get started, so as I don't <laughs> blow your eardrums out with this. Now I'm going to bring in some noise. So this noise is um, available in stereo or mono. Going back to last episode, I was saying that I would like to feel like the sounds find a field around the space, but I'm only going to generate something in stereo for this exercise. So what I'm going to do then is not use stereo noise, I'm going to use mono noise, and I'm going to use panning. Now if I was working with a multi-speaker setup, I would also use mono, but I would be sending it specifically in different ways to separate speakers. What I'm going to do today is just use panning to fulfill the same role. So let's connect up the noise. So that's just our raw pink noise. The first thing I think is going to make it sound a bit more like the C is putting it through a bandpass filter. So I'll bring in a filter, I'll go pick bandpass, I can turn the attenuation back up a bit because the bandpass is taking a lot of the signal out. So already just moving that, I, I can hear it sounding a lot better for us. But what I really want is a shaped wave sound. So what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to use an AD envelope. And the reason to use an AD envelope here is that I always want the full envelope to play irrespective of the gate length, because I'm not actually going to be sending gates in here. I really just want to be sending in triggers. 
So I'm going to set this to a, a length, maybe one and a half seconds on the attack, three and a half seconds on the decay. I just like the idea of a five second total length. The other thing I need now is a way of triggering this because I'm not intending to send in MIDI. So the way to do that, I think, is going to be with triggers. So this trigger device will send out one trigger per phase. Well, what exactly is a phase? Well, phase is the way Bitwig allows us to keep a modular grid patch in time with the timeline. So what happens with the phase then is, say the phase has a length of two bars, which I've just set it to, there will be a modulation source in the grid called phase, which will range from zero at the one, all the way up to one, two bars later, then it'll go back to zero. So we have this sort of ramp waveform that's being sent to us. This means if we jump in at some point in the execution of this, it will still make sense. So anyway, that was an aside on phase. So therefore, what's going to happen here with this trigger, it's normal to the phase input, is there's going to be one bar of high gate and one bar of low gate. And I'm going to connect that up to this envelope. We already have something which is sounding reasonably like a wave. What I would like to do though, is I would like it not to just trigger once per bar. I'd like some more variation here. And I think an easy way to do that is to add a delay. So I'm gonna add a delay with no delay time. And then I'm gonna bring in a sample and hold module. I'm gonna have the sample and hold be triggered by the same trigger the delay is triggered by. And it's going to be set to hold so being set to hold means that it will only generate a new value when a trigger is received. Additionally, I turned this knob down. This selects whether the sample and hold should move smoothly or in step functions to the value. I want it completely stepped. So now I'm going to send this to the delay with a value of one. So what this is going to mean is that each time the wave sound gets triggered, it will trigger between zero and one second after the one of every second bar. Kind of a mouthful, but I think it's not too complicated to comprehend. So let's turn this up a little maybe. So I'd say there are two things which I would like to add that I don't have here so far. One of them is a stereo motion, and one is I'd like motion on this filter, and I think I can use the same source for both. So I'm gonna bring in another AB envelope, and I'm gonna hook this up to our same trigger that we've been using. And let's make it the same length, roughly, as the total envelope time here but let's also make it digital. And the reason I want to do that is I want it to be roughly linear as opposed to exponential because I want a smooth pan across the stereo field. So how am I actually going to make it pan? Well, I'm going to go into a mix and I'm gonna get a pan module. So I'll pan it all the way left so you can hear the audios all the way left. And then I will have it modulated. So since the envelope starts high, it works backwards. It goes from right to left. In this case, as I said, if I was working in a real art installation, I'd be thinking more in a more refined manner about how exactly this panning and this audio output would work. You have the capacity in here to make as many hardware outputs as you would like. So I think what I would probably do then is I'd have an audio interface maybe with, um, 16 outputs, each of which running to its own speaker, and I could break them all out from here so I could have a patch which actually did the spatial audio. Anyway, next thing I would like to do is I'd like to animate this envelope to some degree, so as this filter to some degree. So I'm going to connect this envelope to it, and my thinking is that I want the sound to become 
brighter as we go. And since this envelope is falling, I'm going to run this negative and this positive. Let's listen. So to me, this is supposed to sound like the wave coming towards you. In the distance, it sounds a bit darker and it becomes brighter as it approaches. So I think that's sounding pretty good. Um, something that I think would be nice is it sounds very dead in between the wave sounds. So what I probably want to do is bring some of this um, raw noise through. But as before, if I bring in the noise on its own, it's going to be very, very loud. So first I'm going to bring in an attenuator. And I'm going to hook that up via a blend control. So now we're just listening to this, but there's nothing in it. So I'm going to turn the attenuator way down. I'm going to bring the noise in. So that's the raw noise, which is obviously too bright for our purposes. So I'm going to insert a filter and I'm going to go for the same uh, bandpass filter that we've been using. So I might try using a different noise source. I'm not sure that it'll make very much difference, but let's go for it. Let's make this noise stereo. Hey, it sounds pretty good to me. I think... <laughs> I would like a little bit more space to it, so I'm going to throw in a convolution reverb here. Let's go for one of the really big ones, like um, Grain Silo. I'm going to listen to it 100% wet. I like it with the brightness turned up. Let's add a bit of delay to hint at a bigger space. Okay, so the only thing I can think of now is I would like a bit more variation in the shape of these waves. So I'm going to use some more sample and halts. And this time I'm going to use them to modulate the envelopes. So just like before, I'm going to turn off the normal routing for the trigger input. They can all be bipolar. They can all be stepped because I'm triggering these. So same thing over here. Bipolar, I'm fully stepped, and now I can connect these outputs to the trigger. So I've got this one delayed trigger source that's triggering just about everything to happen. And I'm going to have this modulating the attack. I'm going to have this modulating the decay, and then this and modulate the decay. So now I've got slight variation in the envelope shape. You'll see the envelope change in a moment. So now the envelope is almost exactly as I set it. And then when the next wave comes in, you'll see a slight change if you see the blue line that appears there. So this is working. This is giving us the feel that I wanted. Obviously, when we come back to mix, we're going to adjust how this sounds, but... Make that a little brighter. loud now okay so anyway i won't fine-tune that too much but i think that's a good placeholder sound 
Now what I'm going to do is move over to the Micro Freak to make the sculptures sound. Note that there's already a device in place here, which is a utility, which is just increasing the gain. It's because I found that I didn't really want to adjust all the rest of my gain staging, and this was a little bit quiet, so I just added a little bit extra. It seems like the signal is fairly clean, so I don't particularly have to worry about noise. So anyway, let's look at the hardware. So this is an init patch. So first thing, I remember last time we had a relatively soft sound, like a triangle wave. I'm going to use the harmonic harmonic oscillator to have a similar function here. And just like I was doing on the um, Sonicware Live and 8-bit warps, I am going to start with a certain envelope shape, and I'm going to come up with some way to change that envelope shape. On that synthesizer, I just turned the cutoff knob. In this case, what I'm going to use is the velocity sensitivity of the keyboard. In fact, it's not velocity sensitive, it's sensitive to the surface area that you touch it with. But not particularly relevant here. So let's get an envelope shape first. Let me just come up with something. So my initial envelope, I want it sharp, attack, long decay. And then as velocity increases, I'm going to make the attack longer and the decay shorter. So this is going to give me a way of playing this. So how do I go about doing that? Well, first I need to enable the mod matrix's pressure slot to function as velocity. So I go in utility presets, I get pressure modes, change it to velocity. So now this row corresponds to velocity. Additionally, it's a little bright still, so I'm gonna bring, close the filter a bit. in paraphonic mode. So in paraphonic modes, one of the benefits it has is even though I may only be playing monophonically, it allows the release of one instance of a note to overlap with the attack of the next. It avoids these sort of harsh clicks as it transitions from one to the next. So that's why I did that. Now I'm going to go and try and set the velocity sensitivity for this attack and decay. So in the mod matrix, pressure row, I'm going to set assignable parameter 1 to attack, assignable parameter 2 to decay. These three parameters can be set to any of the knobs on the panel. And now I'm going to try and modulate it. So I want the attack to increase with velocity. So And I want the decay to decrease with velocity. So let's Okay, so I think that sound is like then. Okay, I think that works reasonably well. Um, I'm going to play something in and record it to audio and that's what we'll work with, but I feel like I could do with maybe enhancing the sound a little bit. So let's jump back to Bitwig. And I think the two things I would do to enhance it, one is maybe add a bit of a delay. I'm gonna solo just so I can hear it for a second. So let's soften that. Open the filter. Okay, and then I'm going to add a 
algorithmic reverb to the end of this. So instead of the convolution, I'm going to add an algorithmic reverb, but I'm not going to make it too long. I'm probably going to add another reverb when we come to mix. So let's do a whole. Let's listen wet. Okay, so I'm going to set monitoring to automatic and I'm going to record myself playing just one loop of this. Um, I'm actually going to turn off looping and I'm just going to record off the end. So let's get record enabled. Let's select uh, record for this track and let's play. So if I was doing this for an art installation, I would imagine that I would place this sound in speakers close to the sculpture. I can almost imagine having them rotate around the sculpture. So we're almost there. I don't want anything to be playing as I hit the loop point. Okay, so I can stop recording. So now the audio actually goes over the end, but I can just cut it to length and play back. Okay, so I think we have something that works here. So I think what we will do then is next episode, we're going to come back and I will have taken the samples of the cups that I showed you and some dripping and we'll design the sample based sounds and probably we'll come back in another episode and do the final mix and bring this all together. In any case, I hope it's been interesting seeing this process. I hope you've enjoyed the prompt that I've started with. I have plenty more to come, but most importantly I'd like to say thank you very much for watching and goodbye!